All right, good evening, my fellow saints at the Vine. All right, this is the second video in my playlist preparing you guys to go to uh, Charlotte Gay Pride uh, this year. I got two main things I really want to talk about in this episode. The first being the concept of, and this is really foundational, I think, for going to um, for going to Pride and really just having conversations of this type. And not just of this type, but really of any type but when we're gonna go there we're gonna be talking to people actual people and answering questions causing questions to be asked all right like that's what we're going there to do and the second thing i want to at least introduce uh, the concept of is gospel tracks is gospel tracks all right so what do i mean when i say that we answer people all right what i mean is what i mean is basically just understanding uh that jesus commands us uh, to love our neighbor as ourself all right and that has to extend to our witnessing technique it has to uh if we want it to be as effective as it actually could be for the kingdom you feel me all right, so what that means is, all right, so what that means is that we are not going to be using, whoops, just that, nice. What that means is we are not going to be using witnessing techniques that we ourselves wouldn't see as loving. All right, that we ourselves wouldn't see as loving, right? Which is why I say I personally don't use signs. I personally don't use signs, right? Because even if you have a good message on the sign, even if you're not, you know, even if you're not Westboro Baptisting out there, right? Just the fact that you have a sign sometimes could be enough to kind of dissuade conversation, not to knock people that do use signs. I'm just saying, I don't use them. I don't use them. I'm not going to train you guys to use them. All right. And, and even more importantly, all right, even more importantly, underneath all of that, we are answering people. I know that I spoke about it, you know, for quite a bit in, uh, on the meeting uh, after church service, like Sunday or Wednesday, whatever day that was, uh, that we were all meeting in the back there and we were talking about it. So I won't go super in-depth on it here, um, but for the sake of anyone watching this that isn't part of our little, that isn't part of our group going, um, that just wants to gain some wisdom from this, right? You're answering people. All right, so if someone, so if you're at a gay pride, if, or if you're just having this conversation with someone in the LGBTQ uh, community, and they ask you a question like, um, you know, are you saying that, are you saying that your God, I'm going to use something stereotypical, uh, are you saying that your God hates gay people all right is, is that what you're saying all right understand you're not so much answering that question although you are you are more importantly answering the person who is asking it all right so you might very well just need to back up take a chill pill all right don't fall uh don't fall into habits don't fall into anger and into flesh and into fear and get all hostile back right just you can take a chill pill and just say look before i do answer this let me tell you what i'm not saying let me tell you what i myself am not trying to communicate all right let's just go ahead and uh, I'm going to do my best to go ahead and answer those objections just off the bat. All right. I'm not saying that, you know, that you're unredeemable, that you're cast out forever as of this moment. You know, what I'm saying is, you know, ABC, you know, and we'll get into the, you know, we'll get into the, you know, what those would be in later videos. I'm just trying to introduce the concept to you guys to really think of every single witnessing encounter as talking to a person, all right? You are talking to a person. This is not a practical exam of your apologetics knowledge, 
All right, this is not a practical exam of your apologetics knowledge. You are dealing with actual people, actual human souls that can be redeemed, that are lost in sin, lost without the knowledge, uh, without, without relationship with Jesus, and that have probably, not all, but many have had some painful experiences in their lives, whether it be with family, whether it be with um, immature or false churches out there. You know, they, like they've had life experiences the same way that you and I have our life experiences, right? And we really need to remember that when we're talking uh, to this community, when we're talking to this community, all right? I mean, I've been out there and I've seen people, I mean, like I said, I, I told you about it in the meeting, and I think all of us know of the type I'm talking about, right? The whole, you know, you know, turn or burn kind of thing, which again, like, like if I'm just looking at that statement as just, just analyzing the bare bones theology of it, it's not wrong, but what are they going to hear from you saying that, Right? So, I mean, just really think about the fact that you are going to be talking to a person, to people, to people, all right? And that is going to change your apologetic for how you're talking to them because you're not just concerned with giving, all right? Because you're not just concerned with giving the logically, theologically right answer, though you are, all right? What you are concerned with, what you are concerned with is this hierarchy, right, that I'm going to put on screen, all right, and it's, uh, it's this hierarchy that I would, I put knowledge at the bottom, I put, um, I put emotions in the middle, and I put, uh, the will up top, all right, volition or the will, all right, and this is what I'm talking about, like the three, uh, the three places, um, that resistance to the gospel message is going to come from, right? First and foremost, it's because, you know, Romans chapter 1, again, I'm trusting that you're reading the New Testament to know what I'm referencing here, right? Romans chapter 1, right? All of humanity. I don't care if you're gay, straight. I don't care if you've, I don't care if you're not a church kid. I don't care if you've been in church your whole life. I don't care if you're the pastor's kid, right? The Bible tells me that all of our default position is, I don't want to serve you, God. I don't want to serve you, and I don't really care what you have to say, right? That's number one right there. That that right there is volition, the will. I do not will to follow Jesus. I don't want to, all right? Not the Father's will, not Jesus' will, but my will be done, all right? So that's the first thing. That, that, that's the first core, and everyone's got that. Everyone on earth that you will ever talk to about Jesus has that problem. As that problem, right? So you can just go ahead and assume that's the thing. The next two, the next two are the question here, right? Emotion slash trauma, you know, emotional trauma slash, you know, bad experiences, right? Sometimes people's resistance to the gospel is based and, and is coming out of a place of, I've been hurt by something that looks like this before, and I don't want to go back to that and get second helpings of abuse, right? It's a logical statement. It's a logical statement, right? And I've been seeing a lot of posts lately, and I mean, heck, I know it because I myself am. I, I myself have felt, uh, you know, abuse uh, from people in the church before. I've had it happen quite a bit. Um, you know, so I get it. I get it, right? When it comes to that, when it comes to that right there, we've got to, this is why we're, this is why we're, I'm talking about answering people, right? Because we've got to prove to them, we've got to prove to them that they're really, really that the Bible is true when it talks about the concept of wheat and tares, all right? When it talks about wheat and tares, the parable uh, that Matt, uh, the parable that Jesus tells, I believe it's in Matthew, um, about uh, tares growing up with the wheat. All right, the end of uh, the end of the book of Revelation, Jesus even says that. Yeah, you know, let the one who's holy keep on being holy, and the one who's you know living you know living sinfully, whatever, you know, he's gonna keep on doing his thing, and I'll sort him out at the end. 
right? Which means that in this age that we live in now, you are going to have a true church, you're going to have a fake church, all right? And if the people that we are talking to have never seen the real church and have only um, and have only interacted with the false church, all right, we, we first got to just show them, hey, there are two. There are two. And at first glance, they might even look similar. They might even look similar, right? But they are not the same. They are not the same. Only one of them actually loves Jesus and is following him. The other one is just, you know, Church of Satan by a different name. You know? So, I mean, we got to answer that. And then at the bottom of the tier list is where I put intellectual disagreements with the faith. Intellectual disagreements with the faith, right? Again, and I put them lowest for a couple reasons. One, because they're, in all honesty, the least important reason for most people, right? For most people, even if you can answer all of their intellectual questions about Christianity, which usually for the most part I personally am able to do, right? You're going to find, you're going to meet more resistance from those upper two layers, right? Emotional trauma or I just don't want to, or I just don't want to, right? Which is why I told you guys that the more I learn in Christianity, and I know not little, Right. And the more I learn in Christianity, the more I realize that, um, you know, in some ways, it, in some ways, it's pointless. You know, like in a lot of ways, it is. I'm just finding it, you know, outside of the power of the Holy Spirit to transform. I mean, it's just it's just books. It's just books, you know. And if someone quite simply doesn't want to follow Jesus or if they've got emotional trauma, and I mean like legit emotional trauma, I just don't, I don't mean, oh, you know, I've walked in the church door and the usher didn't greet me properly. No, I'm talking about, I went to church. I went to church. My youth pastor, uh, sexually abused me in this, you know, in the sanctuary, in the bathroom, whatever, like, like real abuse. All right. Not, it wasn't my cup of tea, right? You know, I was married to a Christian man, and he was abusive. My dad was a Christian. He was an alcoholic, right? I'm talking about, like, legit abuse, right? All of those things are going to carry way more weight than the fact that you can, you know, you know explain the archaeology of, you know, of David's kingdom, you know, eight ways from Sunday, Right? Like, none, none of that matters in the face of a priest rape me, so what, what are you talking to me for? Right? We've got to really just understand that those exist, and we've got to really think about how we're going to answer people that have been there. All right? So I want you guys to be thinking about that, really thinking about that, right? And then the other thing, and then, you know, so, you know, moving on, um... Moving on, and really only Scripture and the Holy Spirit can break the first one about the will, right? So, you know, that's why we got to be walking in prayer as we go. Um, the second thing I want to talk about, this uh, this treasure chest up here. Um, let me see. Oh, dear. My wife's going to be mad at me. These things fall. Basically saved. All right. This treasure chest right here. Uh, my wife and I keep our gospel tracks in this treasure chest all right in this treasure chest our gospel tracks all right we've got a uh, we got quite a bit here you know we got a uh, you know randy alcorn um i don't know if you guys i hope you guys can be able to see that. i hope it's not mirrored for you guys uh how can we know we'll go to heaven um you know does anyone care uh you know we put those in there a lot for uh you know for our homeless blessing bags and we talk about those in a later video um some new ones that i haven't used before that i really like uh paul j levin the new birth uh tracks just explaining you know the new birth all right and the whole purpose of a tract all right the whole point of a tract every single one of these every single one of these and I've got so many more in here, dude. Like, I mean, I mean, just just take take a look in this thing, right? Like, I've just like I've got tracks in here. I don't know if you guys can see that. I mean, just look. I've got tracks for days, right? And so, you know, Ray Comfort. You know, why Christianity? Um, 
the whole point of attract is each one of these explains the gospel in its own way from you know a certain angle from a certain angle right and as far as it pertains to pride the way that we're using these is in a couple ways right no matter who you talk to i'm going to i'm instructing you to leave them with a gospel tract all right to leave them with a gospel tract right to continue the conversation in your absence to continue the conversation when you walk away They've got a reliable record of the gospel, right? And people have gotten saved off these, right? Like, really, do some research. Do some research over the next few weeks, like the effectiveness of tracks, right? Yeah, people are going to toss them away. And, you know, you know, a few years ago, uh, you know, one of the guys that went out there with me, he had one of these, you know, just crumpled up and tossed back in his face. Um, but the people that deemed that you know that that will take these they'll take them they'll read them and the holy spirit can convict through these can bring them really to jesus's table in their own soul you know through these through these right and so you know this is what i mean right you know i'll have a conversation with somebody and this is assuming they talk to me, right? I'll have a conversation with somebody, you know, go well, we'll have our talk, you know, we'll end the conversation. I'll say, hey, can I leave you with a, you know, can I leave you with some literature kind of about what we talked about um, just so you can read, um, you know, on your own time, you know, later today or whatever. And if you had a pleasant conversation with somebody, chances are they're going to say yes because you weren't a jerk the whole time. And so, you know, the door's open. You say, okay, yeah, I'll, you know, here's a track, you know, read it. You know, last year, uh, last year, true story, well, not last year because COVID, but, you know, the last year that I went uh, doing this, um, you know, there's a, you know, there's a marshal there. He didn't want to talk to me. You know, he runs off. But then a few hours later, I bump into his buddy. He's got a poster, um, you know, on the side saying, you know, free Satanist hugs, you know, so, you know. I, I go up, I strike up a conversation with him. It turns out he's buddies with the Marshall guy that didn't want to talk to me earlier. So I gave him two tracks. I gave I, I gave him two. And I was like, hey, bro, I got one, like, one of these is yours. Here's yours. But the second one is for your buddy, the Marshall. They didn't want to talk to me earlier. Maybe he'll take it from you. And the Satanist guy, the Satanist guy was like, yeah, I'll do that for you, man. I'll, I'll make sure, you know, I'll, I'll go over there right now and I'll get him to him, you know? Like, dude, by talking to people, by talking to that guy as a person, you know, because, I mean, the way the conversation started, a gust of wind came, it, you know, took the sign out of his hands, and, you know, I kind of jumped and I grabbed it, handed it back to him. And when he learned that I was a Christian, he was kind of confused. He was like, why would you as a Christian catch this sign that's saying free Satanist hugs, you know, and hand it back to me? And, you know, I just told him, like, dude, like, like, I mean, it was your sign. Is your sign like? I mean, clearly meant like. Of course, I'm gonna catch it and hand it back to you. Like, like, what do you mean? You know, and that kind of opened the door to conversation, and you know, like, like, I mean, God did a thing. You know, managed to outsource, uh, you know, the preaching of the gospel to a Satanist. I mean, that was um, that was definitely one of the highlights uh, of that year. Um, but the thing with a good tract is it's focused. All right, no matter how it comes at it, you know, you open it up. You know, just, you know, open it up, you know, how can we know we'll go to heaven, right? Just gets, just gets right to the point. Just gets right to the point. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, the new birth, you know, you open this up and, you know, just, you know, nice, bold subject headers. Um, let me see if I can find one in here that I, ah, here it is. Uh, John Piper, uh, John Piper track, uh, quest for joy. All right. You open this baby up. And I mean, look at that, you know, bright green subject headings that catch the eye, right? Because you don't have a lot of time with these, right? I mean, if the person had a good interaction with you, then you can have this conversation, then you can hand it to them and trust that they'll read it, right? But let's say they don't want to talk to you, all right? Let's say they don't want to talk to you. You know, be like, hey, will you take this? Some won't. Some people that won't talk to you will take a tract. And so you've got to be sure that your tract you know, it catches the eye when you open it. You know, you've only got like a couple of seconds to catch their attention. It's like a YouTube thumbnail. It's like a YouTube thumbnail. If I'm not interested, I ain't reading. 
but you don't want to sacrifice the content of the message of the gospel just for the sake of opening a track booklet, right? Nice bright green subject headers. I like the fact that there's numbers. It you know, draws the person's eye to where they need to go first because sometimes on these pamphlets, it can be a little you know, confusing to know where to start. Um, you know, I like there's you know, a numbering system uh, there. Uh, let me see. Is there anything? Is there another one in here? Uh, I mean, for the most part, they're all kind of still sealed up. Oh, yeah, Greg Gilbert. You know, these what are... You know, what is the gospel? I like using these. You know, they're, they're a little a little long, slightly long, but, I mean, the the doctrine is just so erudite here. I, I don't tend to go anywhere without these. Um, keeping the, I'm keeping the Ten Commandments. This is a good one. I'm probably going to give each and every one of you guys a pack of these because we are definitely going to be uh, witnessing using the Ten Commandments. Um, but, again, video for another time video for another time um all right so this video is getting a little long um all right so i'm gonna leave you guys with a little bit uh, a little bit of homework for the guys that are coming with me uh for the guys that are going to be coming with me um but also if you want to i mean even if you're not coming with me you can leave your thoughts on this in the comment uh in the comment section below but as you're continuing to read through your new testament and really just get you know fed with the gospel really get to know what the word is saying all right i want you to go online i want you to go online and search for gospel tracks all right they can be these they can be others i mean there's all sorts of tracks out here i mean this one right here is even i mean i'm probably not going to use this one i mean it's even got little holographics and things like like there's all sorts of different ways that these things look go online amazon you know wherever Search for Gospel Tract, all right? That's T-R-A-C-T, -T, Tract, all right? Find one that looks good to you, all right? And I want you to judge it based on, you know, based on the criteria laid out. Is the doctrine solid? Is the doctrine clear? All right, you can have solid doctrine that's not clear. Is it solid doctrine that is clearly articulated, all right? Is the design catching to the eye? All right. Do you do you have confidence in leaving this with somebody that they would get a clear and trustworthy gospel preached out of those pages? All right. Find me some tracks that find some tracks that you like, and then track me down. You guys have my number. You guys see me at church every Sunday and Wednesday. Find me. Show me what you got. Let's have a conversation on this. All right. Nice. Peace.